A group of young men last week asked me, uh, are we close to the last hour? Because we heard on YouTube, and I don't know where else, that now it's close to the end of the world. And subhanAllah, I remembered this exact incident that happened through, obviously, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu which is in Bukhari and similar like it in Muslim, where a man entered who was from the, uh, who was a Bedouin, he entered when the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi was with his companions, probably in the mosque, and he asked him, Ya Rasul Allah, Mata Sa'a, O Messenger of Allah, when is the last hour? The Quran and the, the revelations which Allah had sent down beforehand, the Gospel and the Torah and all the other books and scriptures sent upon the uh, prophets, tell us that this world will come to an end and it is called the last hour. So when you hear something like that, it triggers an emotion. When is the world going to end? And then you find that people often go into guesswork, they start giving an analysis. They start interpreting the current events, what's going on here, what's going on there. And they will make it so big in their brains and in their minds that it seems like tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday, the world's going to end or something. And what happens is that they get very intrigued with it. Which is fine. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once passed the group of companions and they were sitting in the masjid after Fajr. And he said, what are you talking about so intriguingly? And they said, we were talking about Ya Rasulullah, the last hour and its signs and everything. And then he sat them down and he told them a few things very simply. But going back to this hadith, this man who came and said, Ya Rasulullah, when is the last hour? Rasulullah immediately replied to him by saying, Waylak, woe to you. Now, woe to you is a negative word. But Rasul Sallallahu spoke Arabic and the Arabs sometimes would use words of astonishment or words that imply, why would you ask that question like that? Why would you ask that question? Where are you going with it? Don't go there. Don't go there. So what did he say? Wailak, don't go there. Wama a'adatta laha. What have you prepared for it? What have you prepared for it? Rasul changed this question to ask, you should be asking, instead of when the last hour is coming, what have you prepared for it? It's not when your time and my time comes to an end. It's on what state will you and I be when our time comes to an end. Not when, but what state. And this is what we should be focusing on. So you see, Rasul directed this young man to not focus too much on when the world will end. This is 1,400 years ago. The guy's already died, his family and children, generations after generations had come. But Rasul doesn't want us to waste time in our talking conversation too much to the point where we start neglecting our day-to-day -day duties of worship, good deeds, righteousness, our duties to our families and children and everything that's around us. You know, when we sit down and talk sometimes about future things and events, we start to analyze this and analyze that. Before you know it, days and, and weeks and months pass, and we've busied ourselves so much in just analytical thinking, guesswork, talking, conversing. Some of us, our prayer goes past, we start delaying it. Some of us, instead of learning something beneficial, we busy ourselves with trying to guess. We go on social media, we start to debate. And then some of us even get into fights and conflicts over what? We've got to be very careful and go back to the reason and purpose that you are here. So, what is it that is within your control and what you should be doing now, right now at this particular hour? But Rasul Sallallahu also is pointing that young man and the companions around him to something else. Not only is he telling us, don't be fixated on when the world will end and its signs and all that stuff. Although there's some benefit in it, but don't fix it. Don't spend too much time on it. He's telling us also that another meaning to the last hour 
is something else as well. Who can tell me what's another meaning to the last hour other than the world ending? No, the death. Barakallahu feek. Your death and my death. So the last hour means your death. Rasul he said, Man mata faqad qamat qiyamatu. Whoever dies, their last hour has arrived. So the Prophet, continuing the hadith, Rasul he says, Ma a'adatta laha. What did you prepare for it? So the man replied, something beautiful. He says, ما أعددت لها إلا أني أحب الله ورسوله. He said, والله يا رسول الله, I have not prepared much. In another hadith, he says, another narration similar to it in Muslim, he says, والله يا رسول الله, I have I, I have not done too many things of salat, too much of zakat, too much of sadaqah, too much of fasting. Like I've done, I pray, I pray, I fast, I I do all these things, but well, I think I haven't done enough. يا رسول الله. I swear by Allah, I love Allah with all my heart, and I love the Messenger of Allah with all my heart. Then the Prophet ﷺ replied, إِنَّكَ مَعْ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ You will be with those whom you love. Or you will be with those whom you love. Meaning you will be, if you, if you are truthful and honest that you love Allah, and you love His Messenger Muhammad ﷺ, then you will also be in the places where Muhammad ﷺ will go and where Allah will talk to you, meaning paradise, Jannah. And all the people who love Rasul Sallallahu and he loves them, and it the same way. So the companions were sitting there and they listened. And they said, they said, while we were there, فَفَرِحْنَا <clears throat> We became so excited. We said, O Messenger of Allah, does the same apply to us what you said to him? That if we love Allah and His Messenger with all our hearts, we'll also be with you? Rasul Sallallahu said, Naam, yes, also you. Fafarihna says, We became so excited on that day, so much so, more than any other days. And then a young, a young boy went, went past. The narrator of this hadith is Anas, radiallahu anhu, who was only about 10 years old. He says, A young boy came past and he was about my same age, same age as Anas, still a young boy, hasn't reached puberty yet. Rasul Sallallahu wanted to teach them something further and he said, see that boy, if he is to live on after puberty and becomes a man, the hour will come before he reaches old age. The hour will come before he reaches old age. Which hour is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi talking about here? Death, his death. So that boy is saying he, he may or may not reach old age. And his hour will come and you, some of you will still live on. Will still live on. Again, he's turning their direction from the world. The world is for Allah. Don't worry about the future. And you, that boy who you see who is younger than you, his end will come before yours, possibly. And you will live on. So don't make a calculation of just because you're so young, you have so much time. And just because you're old, it means you have little time. Yes, generally that's true. Generally speaking, young people do have a lot, inshallah, to look forward to. And an old man has probably less more time as you get closer. But Rasul is telling us, don't sit there with that mindset. Don't sort of calculate as if you know what your future is holding. Today is the day. What, what do you owe of your worship? What should you be doing right now? Do it. In another hadith, which is in, I won't state, it's an authentic hadith, I think it's in Bukhari, maybe someone can correct it for me. Rasul Sallallahu said, if you hear that the last hour is coming, tomorrow the last hour will come, and you have a shoot of plant, and you can still plant it, then plant it, plant it. Don't just say, oh, the world's going to end, there's no point. There's no point of doing any more good deeds. He said, do it. For the truth is, there's still a lot of good life that's coming for people ahead. What's he saying? He's saying two things. Number one, don't just believe everything you hear. There are more rumors than truths. And 90% of information that you receive is misinformation. And most of it after a few days, you'll forget about it. And it didn't really mean anything. It's just people carrying interpretations and giving their own 
you know, probably based on agenda or desires or maybe just to show off or maybe to get likes and views on social media or something like that. And then you just forget about it. For Rasul Sallallahu says, don't hold on to people's words and interpretations, misinformation, things that waste your time. You can do a good deed right now and you have that shoot of plant right in you. You have it. This is in your control. Can you do something with it? Do it. You have your health, you have your money, you have your house, you have freedom, you have um, security, you have whatever you have, brothers and sisters, think what you can do with it that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't sit there giving up hope and saying, oh, the world, come, this is the EME, this is the last hour. I hear this all the time. Something happens, they hear the news about it, suddenly people almost are about to get into a state of depression. What's the point? There's no hope. Ya Habibi. Anta alhamdulillah, you got within your capacity you can do things that's all Allah is asking about for from you some people start to go outside of their lane and they start to accuse scholars and sheikhs and da'is and they start to talk about this person that person they accuse them of being this and being that and subhanallah even backbiting probably eating the flesh of people and just throwing around words out of emotion instead of using that time beneficial they just lost their rewards and they gave this, they took the sins of other people. So brothers and sisters, the Rasul Sallallahu is very caring for us and he wants us to do what benefits us. I have to make a point. Some people may misunderstand and think, does that mean if I love Allah and love his messenger, that's all I need? Brothers and sisters, please understand what the word love means. If you love someone and someone loves you, but doesn't show the meaning of love towards you, or you don't show the meaning of love towards them. Can you call that real love? No. What that means is when, when somebody says, I love you, but doesn't really show it and is not honest about it, what they're really saying is, I want to use you. Not love you, I want to use you. But when you actually show the genuine love, you don't want anything from that person. Then the love starts to grow, husband and wife, they see it all the time. So when you say, I love Allah and I love His Messenger, it comes with action. Not just I love. So we're going to go through, I'll, I'll, right now I'll state five things. What are, the five, what are five things that show and prove that you do love Allah and love His Messenger? You love the Messenger وسلم, by loving Allah. By following Allah, you love the Messenger. Number one, following the message He came to you with. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحِبِّكُمُ اللَّهِ In the Qur'an, Allah says, say, O oh Muhammad, if you truly love Allah, then follow me, follow me, and Allah will love you so much. So it's a, it's a combination. Loving Allah means loving the Prophet ﷺ. Loving the Prophet ﷺ means loving Allah. They're connected. Loving means following as a role model. Number two, Defending his name and his teachings. You don't love him if you don't defend his names and his teachings. Some people do the opposite. They hear one hadith of the Prophet, even if it's authentic, or they, whether authentic, authentic hadith, even if they're not sure of it, the fact that they don't like what they heard, they'll say terrible things about the words of the Prophet. And some of them, instead of attacking the Prophet, they'll indirectly attack the person who said it, as if they, as if they did something good there. When you attack a person who says, a verse of the Qur'an or an authentic hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam or you're not sure if it's right or wrong but you attack them and say terrible words indirectly you are attacking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that doesn't prove your love it means your desire is more important number three proving the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is making sure that what you say is correct about him otherwise you won't say it and if you do say it wrong you'll correct it and you won't care if people if people look at you and say things about you, even if that's the expense of your credibility, correcting the statement of the Prophet if you've said something wrong, shows the love that you love Rasulullah So that's included in defending his name, his teachings. Number three, putting his words above your opinion shows the love of the Prophet Number four, saying salawat whenever his name is mentioned. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi you don't know it in Arabic, say it in English for now, peace be upon him. But try to learn it in Arabic because it's more profound and it carries more comprehensive meaning when you say it in Arabic. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or you can say sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his family. 
Number five, listening, listening and respecting when his words are narrated to you. I quote a hadith to you, you have a friend that's sitting around, you're at home, you're at work with a bunch of friends of yours. It doesn't matter where you are, someone says, you know, I heard the Prophet wasallam said, listen. If the hadith is true, you've respected it. If it's not true, then you can correct them or look it up yourself. But the point is you're respecting the words of the Prophet wasallam. That's why Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. O you who have believed, do not lift your voices above the voice of the Prophet. Uh, so, وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضِ And do not start talking over him like the way you talk over each other. And that includes after his death, someone quotes a hadith for you, says that Rasul said, don't attack them. Otherwise, it's not really showing your love for the Prophet Allah says, and whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, whoever obeys Allah, and the messenger, both of them, then they are the ones who will be blessed by Allah, meaning rewarded, and in paradise with the prophets, with the truly honest ones, with the martyrs and with the righteous, and what a beautiful companionship that is in the end.